Welcome, my friends and brethren in the Lord. Again, we have this opportunity and privilege to read the scriptures and meditate on it and thank God for another day. And we continue our devotional in the book of 1 Peter 2, verses 13 to 17. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil, and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Live as servants of God. This is one of the important injunctions or commands that Peter and even the other writings of the apostles had encouraged us to do, to serve, to live as servants of God. Whose servants are we? Are we servants of God or to someone else? Now, as exiles, there were people who were skeptical. They were called foolish people because they are ignorant of the gospel. Ironically, they think that the preaching of the gospel is foolishness. It's absurd. They are ignorant to the truth. And some of them are oppressed, oppressive and they are violent. And they persecute the Christians during the time of Peter. But unbeknown to them is that the opposite is true. They are fools to see, who say that they are, there is no God. As David says in Psalm 14 verse 1, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is none who does good. So while they accuse God of the, or those who believe in God as fools, they are shooting their own foot because they are the ones fool before God. Now what could silence them is by doing good. What could silence the skeptics and those who are ignorant of the gospel. Nobody can discredit a person by the good deeds that he has done. Even before authorities who are either good or cruel, believers should submit unto them. Perhaps during this time, some early Christians may have argued that if they were being falsely accused and they were spiritually, or they were spiritual foreigners, they were not under the authority of human governments. That they may have immunity from human laws and judges. Perhaps that was their thinking. But Peter rejected that idea. In fact, he tells us Christians to submit to every human authorities, including the emperor. And this emperor during this time was believed to be Emperor Nero, a cruel emperor. Why? Why are we going to submit even to the violent and the cruel emperor or ruler? It's for the Lord's name. The reputation of Christ is demonstrated by the attitude and the behavior of his followers. And Peter insisted that they should be known as people who submit to human authorities. Notedly, and please be clear on this, Submission to ungodly authorities does not always mean obedience and approval. When we submit, it does not mean that we approve an oppressive and a cruel government. We submit because we believe the Bible and we believe that we are going to do good to serve people. People are expected to be cruel if they don't have God in their hearts. People are expected to be abusive because they don't know Jesus. We, we should not be surprised on that. So we are the ones adjusting it by doing good and showing them, overcoming them with good, isn't it? We overcome evil with good. So these skeptics or critics 
who see believers undoubtedly seeing our faith lived out, that we are good people. And on a day-to-day -day basis, they recognize that we do good. People will believe that Christians really are true people. They are not fake. We Christians are authentic people. They will stop believing that Christians are a destructive force in society. And some people that in restrictive access countries, they persecute Christians because they believe they thought that Christians are a threat to the government. They thought that Christians would rebel against the government because of our strong belief in Christ. But they will be proven wrong, or they are proven wrong because Christians never are encouraged to rebel, take up arms, and go against the government. Christians, like for, like for example, in China, they, they worship the Lord. They just continue to serve the Lord despite the persecutions, but they didn't take up arms in order to rebel against the government. But when they are caught, they, they are not afraid to be in prison. It does not mean that when we submit to, to the government, we recognize the government, that we approve it and we obey it and we subscribe to the, unjust, the injustices and the, uh, the unlawful or illegal acts or immoral acts, but we submit because we want to show that we are a people who overcomes or overcome evil in good. They will stop being ignorant about what Christians are really like because they will know better by their direct observations or experience with Christians. Perhaps this is what you need in your office, in your workplaces. You just continue to do good. So to convince people that Christians really are trustworthy people, honest people, and good. In summary, we believers should be serving people by doing that which could bring the best in others and to lead them a step closer to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's not provide a stumbling block for them for the gospel. A good deed is that which edifies others. People will be amazed that if we do good to them despite of their wrong attitudes and actuations toward us. This will lead them a step closer to believe the gospel, I believe. This is the reason why believers should, according to Peter here, honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Christians should be noted of doing good. Christians should be noting, noted of helping and serving and, you know, thinking and doing the best interest of others. We love not because we expect people to love us again or love, this, love us back. We, we do good. We love God. Or we, do, we love people. We even were, are, are commanded by God to love our enemies. Because we reflect the character of God if we are going to do it. So those who are truly born again believers, are truly sons of God, will be like their father. You know, our father gives rain both to the just and to the unjust. He, he let his sun sh shine to both the righteous and the wicked. God gives common grace to all people. We should be gracious folks. We should serve people. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your word today. Thank you for reminding us that we should be living as servants of God, not use our freedom to do uh, evil, but to use it in order to serve people. Like Paul, he became the servant of all. To the Jew, he became a, a Jew. To the Greek, he became a Greek in order that we might be able to preach the gospel that he will be able to connect them to the good news and they will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to do this thing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.